Hello, all you lovely, lovely people, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, or is it the heart of my bottom? Possibly both. And um, welcome back to The Library is Open, and indeed a very special episode of The Library is Open. I always say that like it's going to be, um, you know, like one of those special episodes of a, of a teenage sitcom or something. This week we learn how Marie um, dealt with an ice skating injury, you know. Uh, but it's not that, and I'm sure Marie's fine. But this is a LGBTQIA Pride Month special, so I hope you brought your queer library cards, my lovelies. Uh, so yes, this is indeed June, the month of Pride, or Pride Month, if you will, uh, which is, interestingly enough, I think is an American phrase, in the sense that June is their specific or you're, if you're watching from America, Pride Month, whereas in the UK um, and in other places, obviously, um, our Pride season tends to stretch from around about May to September because lots of different small places have Prides over the course of those months. Um, so, um, <clears throat> but I thought it's a great excuse for a video and a great excuse to talk about some wonderful books, both fiction and non-fiction for all ages that deal with queer related subjects. Uh, should that float your proverbial boat. So um, I've dressed for the occasion, as you can see, I've got my lovely um, flag top on. These are some of the flags um, in within the community that deal with various gender identities. Just run through them really quickly. So this is um, the gender queer flag. This is gender fluid, uh, trans, non-binary and agender. Uh, and if you want some more information on those, if you do a quick Google of Pride flags, um, loads of different information will come up about the various flags that are associated with the community and its various facets. Because representation really matters and is important. I've got a rainbow straw there, I really didn't plan this, I promise. Well, so I hope you're doing well today anyway. You may notice that I'm currently sans eyebrows. Uh, which is because my asthma is back in town after a short hiatus. Um, and indeed, the vegan queens uh, have recently done a Pride special of their own, which I will link in the description below. Uh, lots of fun frolics, lots of northernness, lots of, you know, hard-hitting political commentary and nails. So what more do you really want? Um, I was going to wear a special piece of jewellery today that I bought for myself to celebrate Pride Month, but... Unfortunately, um, a delivery service who shall remain nameless, but which rhymes with, or rather sounds like, Marcel Boss, um, have unfortunately not delivered that um, as they said they would. So that's a pain, but you'll just have to make do with my sparkling personality as the accessory. That's what pale and interesting people say, isn't it? And I'm very much pale and interesting. Pie. So, uh, I've decided to um, introduce you to zero, how many? 11 books um, in, that are on my sort of Pride Month reading list, um, which may actually extend to the whole season, because I'm not sure I can read them all in one month. But I think what I've tried to do is sort of be um, quite inclusive of various identities within the community, um, and also to give as I said before, a variety of uh, books for different age ranges, fiction, non-fiction, memoir, so on and so forth. And um, I've, the reason I've chosen 11, which may seem like a random number, is because there are 11 colours on the current or contemporary Pride flag. Brief history of the Pride rainbow flag, um, for those of you who may not be aware. Uh, originally designed in the 70s by Gilbert Baker, it had... Um, I think it was eight colours on it. I could be wrong there. Uh, it was then redesigned later due to um, various reasons, pigment shortages and so on and so forth, or the difficulty of creating particular colours for mass production. And then since then, it's undergone various incarnations. Most recently, it was adapted to include black and brown stripes, um, which are a tribute to people of colour within the queer community. It's very important. And um, and also the trans flag colours, which are um, pink, light blue and white. So now it currently looks like um, on the standard flag, it has uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then chevrons of black and brown and uh, pink, light blue and white. Um, I do believe there is a, a debate going about whether they will add um, intersex into the flag as well, which is, I believe, 
I, I, I know is a purple circle on a yellow background so stay tuned for that um and you know i don't think ever extending the iconography to include people is ever a bad thing you know um although there has been some controversy around it but we're not going to do it with negatives here we're going to do it with positives um but, you know, suffice to say, my opinion on that is that representation matters and that I don't think we ever lose by including people. So that's my two penneth, if you will. So, yes, there are 11 colours there and therefore 11 books. That's my reasoning and I'm sticking to it. So without further ado, let's kick off with an absolutely delightful book that I was lucky enough to discover at um, a lovely shop in uh, Affleck's Palace in Manchester, which is where I'm based. And... A gay pride shop um it's also an online resource which is great so if you're not in the northwest you can access that um loads of books loads of kind of paraphernalia jewelry flags and so on and so forth for lots of different communities within the queer community um i will leave a link to that in the description below i'll also leave some more info on the rainbow flag in case you want to read up on it should have said that but this is an absolutely gorgeous book for children and it is called the hips on the drag queen go swish 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 and it's by a little miss hot mess and illustrated by olga de dios which is essentially a um or it could be dios sorry if i mispronounce that it's essentially a um a riff on the wheels on the bus go round and round but with drag queens and just give you a little look there uh, it really sort of captures the powerful and vibrant force of drag in a really child-friendly way. Um, and just sort of really introduces that idea of, you know, people are different. What I really love is the fact that um, all the different drags that are represented, uh, we could have done with some kings, I'm not going to lie, but that might be a different book, um, are, um, you know, kind of showcase, you know, we have a bearded queen, we have glamorous queens, we have comedy queens, we have kind of a genderqueer queen here. And I just think, isn't that a lovely thing for for children and young people? Um, I think that's really gorgeous. So I picked up a copy for myself because I wanted one. So there we go. That's our first book. The Red, if you will. Uh, moving on, this is kind of in a similar vein, but not. I think this can be for any age. This is uh, Dominique, who are a, um, I believe they're on Instagram. I'll have a look. Um, and they do sort of cartoony pictures of queer icons. And this is their newly released book, Queer Power. And it's subtitled Icons, Activists and Game Changers from Across the Rainbow, which is lovely. And this is kind of set into, do you know those books, uh, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls or things like that, where it's sort of like one page story on different like historical figures. It's kind of like that, but um, for the queer community. Um, so there are, it's split into uh, Pride Power, Love Your Queer Self, Proud Families, Trans and Non-Binary Power and Out Proud and Visible. And just to give you uh, an example of the diversity in here. We have um, Ryan O'Connell, who created and stars in the um, the Netflix show Special, about a young queer man with uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, there's uh, Little Nas, obviously quite famous, um, particularly of late, of the controversy around the Call Me By Your Name video. Um, we have Drag Syndrome, who are the drag troupe who are performers with Down Syndrome. Um, who else we got? Who else we got? Uh, honestly, I should have figured this beforehand, shouldn't we? Shouldn't I? Um, Teddy Gorgeous, one of Manchester, the Manchester Queens there. Lovely. Um, we also have... Um, just look for one more. Oh, yes, uh, India Moore there, who plays Angel on Pose. And it's just really beautiful and really gives you a nice overview that can also, if you're not familiar with these people, it can just redire redirect you. Oh, Frida Slaves there as well, drag artist extraordinaire. Um, and you can sort of go and do more research on them. So I think that's just a lovely little book to have. Kind of a coffee table book, but smaller. So that's the orange. Now on to some fiction, I think for slightly older readers, uh, this will be the yellow stripe, if you will. This is Dryland by Sarah Jaff, uh, which is, it's 
tagline is a tender meditative meditative it's quite hard to say my accent and quietly kaleidoscopic novel about the 90s queer adolescence and swimming uh it's set in portland uh where 50 year old julie winter moves through her days as if underwater the rest of the world is caught up in the aids crisis the war in yugoslavia and grunge no one at home talks about her older brother, a former champion swimmer who could be living in Berlin or could be anywhere. And although she spends her time searching for pictures of him in the pages of Swimmer's World, she never considered swimming herself until Alexis, captain of the swimming dream, dream, team, tries to recruit her. What starts as a flirtation and an infatuation becomes a chance to join in with the world. Um, so I think this is really, really interesting sounding. I got this from News From Nowhere in... Um, Liverpool, where I work sometimes, and uh, which is a sort of community hub shop, like co-op, um, that deals in political um, and, uh, well, politically engaged books, materials, so on and so forth. Uh, lots of great um, resources in there, so I just picked this up, and it's really nice to support an indie bookseller as well, isn't it? I also don't want to be one of those queer people that only reads from a specific subsection of the community or just be like oh i'm only interested in reading about you know queer men um or whatever or only interested in reading about non-binary people or only interested in reading about this you know i want i want my reading to be varied across the community because that's what i believe is important so that's yellow uh, on what's the next color green my favorite color and this is a new piece of ya fiction called the outrage i saw this advertised and i thought that sounds really really interesting because it's quite a and this is not a critique a simple idea but i haven't seen it done like this before so uh, it says on the back welcome to england uh where there are rules for everything what to say what to think who to hate and who to love not a million miles away from the truth uh, Gabriel is a natural born rule breaker and his biggest crime is being gay. His secrets must be kept not only to protect himself but to protect his boyfriend because his father is the chief inspector at Degenerate Investigations and the man who poses the biggest threat to their lives. So it's kind of Handmaid's Tale vibes with a, a queer male fit, uh, queer male slant on that. And also, you know, I suppose what's really interesting about this is that it's sort of speculative in terms of what if this happened but you know this was the reality for a very very long time um and even after the laws were changed we you and i know that a legal change is not the same as a social change and so on and so forth so i'm, I'm interested to see where this goes in but it, it feels a bit odd in terms of like that was the norm you could be arrested so interesting um, so that's the outrage, which is our green stripe. Let's do our blue stripe, shall we, with our final piece of fiction. Uh, this is uh, by Jen Silverman, and it's called We Play Ourselves. And this was an impulse buy that I found on the Pride list on the Waterstones website, which actually is a really good list of like, um, like sort of page dealing with like LGBTQIA Pride related books at this time of year. Um, this is about Cass, who's a 30-something promising queer playwright, that's what snagged me, because playwright, um, who receives a, a prestigious award, um, but then she finds herself at the centre of a searing public shaming which relegates her from rising star to a nobody on her best friend's sofa in LA. Um, as she comes to terms with her failure, she's forced to question who she is without the thing that has always defined her, her art. Um, so she fills the days by stalking her playwright nemesis, and getting pulled into the orbit of the charismatic but manipulative filmmaker next door. Uh, it says it's darkly funny and it's about the cost of making art and the art of making enemies. So this is really, really interesting, as I say. Um, very interested in reading things that deal with issues that, well, not directly, but issues that I deal with in my career as well and again as i said before very interested in reading from a perspective that is not mine and i think that's important so there we go so that's our blue stripe uh let's go to shall we let's switch tack slightly and go to some memoir stuff uh we have for our purple stripe sorry and this is freak like me by malcolm mclean this was also a purchase from um gay pride shop in athletics palace um and this is a, a memoir about music basically and a music fan so it says in 90s small town surrey watching top of the pops malcolm's only escape from boredom and the bullies at school until a phone call from a pop star changed his life forever 
Before long, he was getting compliments from Beyonce, hanging out at awards ceremonies with Posh Spice's mum, that's camp in it, and sneaking into All Saints gigs, or on, onto the All Saints tour bus. Freak Like Me is the true story of one teenage pop fan who, with a group of like-minded outcasts, witnesses the disposable music industry of the late 90s and early noughties firsthand. Now, this appeals to me a lot because I imagine that we were, um, if not the same age, or uh, at least a similar age in terms of, or a similar demographic in terms of accessing that kind of pop music. We kind of came of age with that, um, you know, those bands and stuff and that, that iconography, Smash Hits magazine, Top of the Pops and so on and so forth. If you're an American uh, or uh, Australian, wherever viewer that's not from the UK, um, Top of the Pops was a uh, like a sort of chart show on uh, Friday nights on BBC and Smash Hits magazine was the Bible. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, but this is really interesting. So I imagine this is in the, uh, was in Gay Pride Shop because the writer is queer in one way or another. So I'm really, really interested to read about that and also to sort of think about, bless you, someone sneezing, uh, and also to, um, you know, think about the the relevance and importance of, of pop culture to queer people because it's quite an interesting relationship. Maybe I'll do an inch, a follow-up video on that. So that's our purple stripe. Let's do our black and brown. Let's do one of um, our black and brown stripes. So we have... Oh, no, sorry, I've moved on. <laughs> moved on too quickly there. We also have under memoir. This is brand new. Uh, this is Paris Lee's What It Feels Like for a Girl. Paris Lee's is, um, uh, was, I became aware of as a, a columnist, social commentator, and also activist, um, particularly um, in terms of trans issues. Uh, she, basically this is her memoir of growing up and um, discovering her identity at the start of the 21st century. Um, it says here, an escape from Nottingham's kinetic underworld and discovery of the East Midlands premier podium dancer come Hellraiser, the mesmerising Lady Die. When the come down finally kicks in, they arrive at a shocking encounter that will change their lives forever. So, and I understand this is a memoir. Is this a memoir? Is this a memoir? Or have I, it's not fiction, is it? I don't know. I mean, I suppose it matters either way. I'm very interested to read whatever Paris Lees has to say. But um, I do remember that What It Feels Like for a Girl was the name of her column. So I'm imagining it's memoir. Um, and uh, it deals with her experience as uh, a trans person, um, assigned male at birth and later um, transitioning. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. And what a beautiful cover as well. Isn't that gorgeous? So, sorry I mangled that, didn't I, as, an, as a blinking overview. But um, there we go. That's the second memoir. Um, finally, moving on to, I guess, what we would class as non-fiction or kind of, um, you know, uh, information-y books. Information-y books. Uh, we have uh, this one, which has still got the price on, so I'm just going to pick that off um very, very discreetly although not that discreetly because i've just told you <laughs> this is daisy jones all the things she said which uh is uh, subtitled everything i know about modern lesbian and bi culture um so this is from the perspective of a queer woman writing about contemporary queer female culture um it is i believe trans inclusive uh, i checked that before i bought it because i'm not interested in reading things that are in any way um exclusionary um but she, uh, she says on the back this is everything i've learned about a queer as a queer woman about queer culture everything that others have taught me the world of nightlife our pop music our styles and signifiers what being a lesbian or queer or bi even means right now when ideas about gender and identity and intimacy are loosening up and expanding so i think that's an interesting conversation to have uh how um you know sort of emerging discourse really kind of uh, gives us the space to reimagine what our identities might be and how we might talk about them in new and exciting ways. Um, I love this as well. Um, it says, from the dingy basement clubs of East London to the uncharted realms of TikTok, cutting in DIY mullets and christening Meryl Streep daddy. Now that sounds hilarious. And um, I'm really, I'm really excited to see that. 
uh, to read that, sorry. So, all the things she said, Daisy Jones. Uh, continuing on that room, this is a sort of look at lesbian queer woman identity pre that. And I picked this up on my trip to Hebden Bridge with Paul and Jason from Those Vegan Guys. And this is a Sunday Times Book of the Year book. And it's called No Modernism Without Lesbians by Diana Sahami. Sahami. Um, and it's about four women who broke the rules. Sylvia Beach, Natalie Barney, Briar, Briar and Gertrude Stein. My apologies there, I couldn't see. I can't always wear my specs on this because you get glare from the ring light. Um, so a trailblazing publisher, a patron of artists, a society hostess and a groundbreaking writer. All women who loved women, they rejected the patriarchy and made lives of their own. Um, this is the story of how a singular group of women at a pivotal time and place fostered the birth of the modernist movement. And I think it takes place in Paris, I want to say. Um, sort of before and during the Second World War, which uh, I'm very interested in reading about um, the historicised queer identities. Uh, not that far back, because I think we run into problems when we try and historicise queer identities pre-modern terminology and discourse. I think that's a different thing, and we should dissect that as what it is. Um, and a beautiful green cover. You know green's my favourite colour. Just saying. So that's that one. Um, last two now. Um, I picked up this one again from Gay Pride Shop, and I'm very, very interested. Uh, and it's called Ace. What asexuality reveals about desire, society, and the meaning of sex. So the A in... Uh, LGBTQIA uh, is often misunderstood to mean ally, but as I understand it means asexual, agender, aromantic. Uh, there are various discussions about what each letter signifies, but uh, I'm going to go with this because I think it's interesting and that ace people are indeed a part of the LGBTQIA community, particularly if they have, although not to say that if they don't, then they're not allowed. Obviously, there's no such thing as gatekeeping because who would gatekeep? Who's in charge? No one. We're all mad here. Um, but uh, this is, catch me sniffing it then. Um, <clears throat> particularly, yeah, ace people who are also lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans. Because they could be um, asexual but um, romantic and have, you know, romantic relationships with members of the same sex, or they could even have various gender identities, so it matters. And I just think this is really, really interesting, and I think it's something we've not heard a lot about as much, um, and I think it's been widely misunderstood, and I think it's really an important thing to look at, particularly when so much of our culture and society is highly sexualized and built around, you know, um, consumerism, that relies on either eroticization or the idea that sex sells, which I'm not disputing, but I'm saying it's not a cut and dried thing for everybody. And what happens to a society that relies so heavily on sexual attraction, the selling of sex, I don't mean as sex work, but as in the selling of the concept to move product, move ideas, when you don't experience sexual attraction. And I would like to know more about it. So that's why I picked up this. And then finally, uh, a last one from uh, Queer, Queer, from Gay Pride Shop, is uh, Fat and Queer, an anthology of queer and trans bodies and lives, which is edited by Bruce Owens Grimm, Miguel M. Morales and Tiff Joshua T.J. Ferentini. And this is pretty much what it is. Uh, it's described as a vibrant collection of diverse, often silenced voices that speak to the extraordinary resilience and tenacity that allows these writers to thrive in a world that rarely celebrates or affirms their identities. So it's prose and poetry, basically, that, that looks at uh, the intersection of fat and queer identities, which, um, you know, as a fat child slash teenager, um, I am interested in because I think it gives you a very specific relationship with your body. I'm not talking about sort of that's always being a negative thing. I'm a big fan of the body positivity movement, as long as it's not hijacked to just, you know, be a showboat for whatever you're trying to sell. But, um, you know, you do experience life differently as a fat person. And I don't say fat in a derogatory way or, 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 a negative, or in a negative light. It's a descriptor, like tall, you know. 
as as a, a fat person when I was younger. Um, I can say that. Maybe I will be when I'm older. Who knows? Uh, bodies are meant to change with time, and um, it is about how we how we reconfigure those identities around that because there's no denying that a a fat person who is straight and a fat person who is queer experience those things differently because the culture is different. Uh, so I'm very, very interested in uh, in hearing about and reading about people's specific experiences. A little bit like when I was talking about um, Jamie Windish's uh, In Their Shoes in a few videos ago, um, which was about non-binary identities. I think learning about how people specifically formulate and describe their identity is just endlessly fascinating. Um, you know, because experience is entirely personal. How could it be otherwise? So I thought that was a great place to end my sort of pride uh playlist book list if you will oh i'm gonna oh, go cheat i'm gonna cheat sorry i'm gonna cheat i said 11 but i'll just really quickly mention this as well which because it deals with similar themes i'm reading this at the moment uh, this is pumpkin by julie murphy which who was the writer of dumpling uh, which was also adapted to into a netflix film with jennifer aniston and this is about a fat young queer man in uh clover city west texas who uh, is obsessed with a reality TV show called The Fiercest of Them All, which is a little bit like Drag Race, and um, gets, as a joke, gets nominated for a prom queen and then decides to just go for it. And this is a... I just love the cover. I think that's beautiful. And also, you know, again, these are themes that I am interested in reading more about. And there's some quite radical ideas in here, particularly for, I guess, what would be class classed as YA, that I haven't seen expressed before. So I'm very, very interested in that. And I may do a whole video on this. I do not know yet. But there we go. So they be the books. Um, why, do, why not sound off in the comments and let me know what you're reading, if indeed anything special, for uh, LGBTQIA um, Pride Month or the Pride season, if you're in the UK or elsewhere in the world. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um... You know, I love to make my uh, queer related videos because it's a big part of my life. And, um, you know, as a queer non-binary person, um, I like to norm that as a conversation and not ever apologise for it or ask for permi per permission, permission to talk about it or feel that I'm sort of having to justify why I keep talking about it. I keep talking about it because I live with it every day. So it is my everyday reality and existence, you know. Um, not that you need me to tell you that, because if you're here on this channel, um, I'm sure you know it already. But yes, so put that beautiful queer library card somewhere safe, my darlings, until the next time. And do me a favour and have an absolutely beautiful Pride Month. Even if you don't feel that you fit into the LGBTQIA community, um, there will be an aspect of your life that is in some way related to that or to people from the community and you know we can all celebrate this it is not about excluding going this is not for you this is not for you it's about valuing the diversity of all our communities and also what they bring what we bring to to the to the world the rich tapestry that is the world so with that said happy pride month big rainbow tinted kisses digitally to all of you hug it's the hug emoji and i will see you in the next video much love Mwah.